everyone gets discouraged. Everyone. It doesn't matter whether it's Billy Graham or I'm trying to think of, oh, I know, um, Joel Osteen, <laughs> you know, Mr. Smiley. It doesn't matter who it is. Everyone gets discouraged at some point in time. That's okay. Admit it. Be real with it so you can deal with it. In other words, having the Holy Spirit inside doesn't mean that you won't be discouraged at times. It's not a lack of faith on your part. It's not because you're in sin. It's because you're a human being. The body itself goes through emotions. God created those emotions, and it's not as though God created a happy emotion, and then the opposite occurs because he created the happy, then there has to be the opposite extreme of unhappy in order to balance out. No, that's not how it works. God created the happy emotion, and he created the discouraged emotion. Both are from God. In other words, they have a purpose. There is a reason for it. It is good. It's not bad. It's something you should go through. A time of discouragement is good. What you do with it determines whether or not you can use it positively to your benefit or whether it's going to work against you in some way. That's your choice and it's determined by your wisdom of accepting, first of all, God's will. Second of all, God's provision for it. And then third of all, how you act or react to it based upon your personal relationship with God. There's nothing wrong with being discouraged. Sometimes that's a good thing. There's in the devotional a long story about a man who is one day, you know, he's getting married basically and his son's getting married and so his son is blind and he's being, you know, having the eye surgery done and he's going to see for the first time and he's never seen his wife because he lost his eyesight. And so the woman he marries, you know, he's going to, you know, see for the first time on his wedding day and they cut off the bandages and then he sees her for the first time. It's a beautiful story. Um, being that it's old and that it's in streams in the desert, I tend to believe that story is true. A lot of times there are stories that are in like pulpit commentary and other things that are kind of, eh, you know, they seem contrived, so not so convinced of it. But the scripture that's used, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is rewarded them that diligently seek him. From Hebrews 11.6. The point I wanted to bring out is that everyone, no matter how wise they are, smart they are, or long they've been with the Lord, do get discouraged. But when you compare it to what you're getting, it's just hard to explain because, you see, I hear all the time these stories and I've seen them on the internet, you know, and you have to about people, five minutes in hell, ten minutes in heaven, you know, these kind of, you know, interesting stories, you know. It's interesting, you know, I, I try not to discourage people because sometimes their emotional, you know, state may be such that they experienced something and how that is interpreted by the Holy Spirit, okay. For me, you know, if anything that they say doesn't jive with Scripture, I question it, you know. I can't question their experience, I can question the validity of what they're describing, and that I do question. Now, personal experience is a personal experience, you know, I can say that two people going through you know a thrill ride may not see it the same way somebody may go up a roller coaster and think it was the most exciting fun filled thing in the world another person may go up that roller coaster and be terrified out of their mind both experience the same thing but both reacted differently you see what i'm saying it's a completely different experience for one as opposed to the other and each emotion is valid for what they experience based upon their personal observation of it or their personal adapting to it. So sometimes when I try to avoid not sharing sometimes too much of my personal experiences because I know the scriptures, I know how it applies to just about everybody. You know, I mean it's pretty easy once you kind of let God be God and you know you back off, you know, it's pretty easy to understand where everybody's coming from because God will open your eyes to it and say, you love them, you know, because 
you really don't know where they're coming from, you know, and you kind of get to see it from God's perspective. But one of the things that, yes, I've experienced, you know, that why I share about this, about um, going through the things of this world are nothing compared to the things that we're suffering now or the discouragements or any of the trials are nothing compared to the glory that shall be revealed, you know, in heaven when we get there. It's because there was a time when I was walking home, you know, and it wasn't unlike today. It was not quite this cloudy, but it was, I was at Calvary Costa Mesa. And I was kind of cloudy, and I was going home to Fountain Valley. You know, I uh, lived in Fountain Valley, and I was taking a bus, and I attended this church, you know, which if you don't know what Calvary Chapel are, this was a church in the Jesus movement, and it was during a time when a lot of things were going on. <laughs> Pretty cool. You know? <laughs> some things were strange, some things were cool, some things were very unusual. And uh, I was walking home from the bus stop, you know, and I was kind of tripping along with the Lord and talking to him. And, you know, in those days, you know, Jesus had made like appearances, you know, like in the back of a VW, you know, like suddenly he's there and suddenly he's gone, you know, and these people told me, you know. So, you know, there are different experiences that I know that, you know, some of the people that experienced it were probably valid, you know. It was kind of like neat in the Jesus movement, you know, but nowadays you kind of wonder because they don't really quite describe it the same. It's kind of... They're making money off it or something, you know. But anyways, the point being is that I was walking home and I was kind of, kind of talking to God, you know. And I was saying, you know, Father, I, I understand all this stuff that you know people experience, but you know, Lord, I just sometimes want to go home, you know. And I was walking along and I was looking out on the horizon towards the east. It was kind of interesting, is that there were kind of like layered clouds, you know. Just kind of, not step ladder clouds, but just kind of a, you know how you look at an angle and you can see kind of puffy clouds and make kind of like a, almost, there's a certain kind of cloud to be blunt. And I was looking at it, you know, and I just stopped for a minute and I just said, God. And I just stared and the sun was rising and suddenly I was not there. And <laughs> I somehow knew behind me my body was still there how I knew that I don't know I just know it wasn't like I looked back but somehow I was aware of that and it was kind of like I was I like to call it cloud tripping nowadays but you know back then it was just kind of like an out of body experience it was astral projection not <laughs> you know these things at the time if you've experienced something like that or similar and it was like the Lord was kind of drawing me on and just said come on up you know and I was like Okay, you know, I'm just kind of wandering up. And it was as though, once I was like in this kind of beginning of what I felt like was maybe the first heaven or, you know, the entrance to heaven, so to speak, or the heavens, uh, that um, the Lord kind of, I could feel almost as though there was all these people that I couldn't see and all this overwhelming desire for me to come farther in to walk in more and I was so filled with peace beyond the peace that I'd already known beyond all the joys that I'd known that I was amazed at just how it felt and I I kind of wanted to keep going I wanted to go farther in I wanted to move into what it was that I was experiencing and what I knew was farther ahead and I didn't see anyone I didn't talk to anyone per se but I knew and I could understand God being there. And God was talking to me at the time. And I just appreciated that moment, that reality. It was, again, I had a completely huge emotional experience when I got saved. And then 40 days later, and it was 40, you know, that I had a completely huge emotional experience when I got baptized the Holy Spirit and all kinds of things, you know, me speaking in tongues and all kinds of good things going on, you know, that weren't over the top for, you know, Pentecostals because they're kind of like used to it. But I wasn't rolling around on the floor or barking like a dog or anything like that. But I was speaking in tongues that I didn't even know what it was. You know. And then I had gifts that were unbelievable, you know, at the time. And, you know, still, you know, I believe that anybody can have those gifts, you know, and I still believe to this day that it's just natural. It's not anything abnormal. You don't go put on some holiness. You just like right now, you can start talking in tongues and be just normal like I'm talking to you, you know, and then you can interpret it just normal like I'm interpreting for you, you know. Same thing. To me, it's not that big a deal, you know, and it's not the heavenly language. <laughs> You'll get over that, believe me. But, um, so anyways, my point being is that 
in experiencing that, it was like so beyond all of those experiences that it was just, I knew that when you say peace, love, and joy, it really is all God, you know, that it's God, you know, that the love and joy, or the joy and peace is part of the love part that God is, and what God is, when it says God is love, is more than what we really understand, it's kind of like a dimensional thing, and I had somehow transposed into a dimensional reality that, wow, was cool, you know, I, I was like dumbfounded, I just didn't tell anybody at the time, walked away, and enjoyed it for what was personal between me and God and to be honest I also thought everybody else kind of experienced that too <laughs> little did I know no <laughs> they don't and so I kind of had to realize that you know that's part of what this scripture means when it says that the things up there are so much better and so much greater and so much more powerful in reality than the things we suffer here that this suffering is nothing compared to the glory that's to be revealed in heaven to us and I can just tell you that it's awesome I mean man I mean it's not like I was in a worship service I wasn't singing or doing anything you know particularly holy I was just coming home from a service you know it's kind of like bebopping you know <laughs> talking to God you know just enjoying it and I only share this now on this video, and I know video, I know once it's out there, you know, it's gone and you know, you can't pull it back. But I don't like, you know, really people sharing those things if they have been to heaven or they have been, you know, they say to hell. I don't think anybody's been to hell, no offense. I think scriptures are pretty clear about that. But, uh, or seen hell, I don't believe that either. Um, pardon me, but that's my opinion. <laughs> I can stick with it and I can back it up scripturally. But anyways, but heaven, well, you know, <laughs> Paul, <laughs> you know, there's a lot more about where God wants us to be and preparing us for it that maybe you need to experience. Maybe in being discouraged, sometimes you need to be encouraged, you know. And I know what I did by taking that experience and having it as a memory, I began to recognize that if I could encourage someone, you know, to get out of where they were at, you know, because sometimes they were so discouraged that they were just completely bummed, you know, that at rare moments I shared with them certain things, you know, that God and I have, you know, experienced together. <laughs> it's kind of cool, you know. And um, that's why God said He spared my life, was, you know, to... You shall not die, but declare the works of God, you know, that I've given to you, you know, blah, 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 you know, yada, yada. It's a psalm, you know, so don't worry about it. It's not anything spiritual or super, you know, spiritual, not somebody special. No, it's a psalm, that's all, you know. But God spared my life and allowed me to experience a lot of things. And, and I guess that's why sometimes don't worry about being discouraged, you know, because this isn't where you're supposed to be. And I so appreciate that song that tries to, you know, sing it out about this is not where I belong. I know that, you know, this is not my home, you know. And one day you'll go home. And so, if I could share with you a, a fact, there's nothing in this world that compares to what's going on up there. Nothing. I mean, there's no orgasmic experience. There's no drug. There's no peripheral physical sensation that will ever describe what it's like to have the reality of heaven in you or be there that ministers to your spirit that goes so far beyond anything that your flesh could ever imagine that you should even begin to whine about you know how long it's been or what we're going through this is nothing I mean even the sufferings that I went through when I was in great suffering in the hospitals for 10 years is nothing compared to, oh, what you feel when you're there. I mean, it's awesome. <laughs> it's just, it's almost like, I guess part of you would say, man, you know, you, you like to say that you're complete because you feel a lot of peace and joy and, and you know, that kind of fulfillment, you know, here. And you do. You really do. You know, I mean... If, you, if you're in Jesus, you know, there's times where, you know, you just feel, yeah, you know, cool, Lord. You know, it's just like, yeah. But, man, there it's like, everything is, 
I mean, expansive would be a good word. Expansive is a good word. <laughs> it's like no boundaries. And that's all I can really say to you because even Paul said sometimes that to describe things that there would be sin, you know, to even attempt to. And <laughs> he's right, you know, it just. Everything, every emotion, you know, well, peace, love, and joy, you know, I'll say that. Let's just stick with love. But, anyways, the emotions of that peace and love are so expansive that they, it just feels like it goes on and on and on. And it just, it's not a good way to describe it, but to use the word expansive in every direction would be a better way to allocate a word for it. Because words don't describe it. You don't. You don't talk, trust me. You just experience, you know, and kind of like when John got there and said, boom, he's down, you know, because he was like in it. <laughs> we went like first heaven, second heaven, like there, you know, presence of God, whoa, boom, down. You know, people are talking about presence. Don't get caught up into that, you know. I mean, there's a lot of religious talk of presence of God and this, that, and the other thing. Don't go there, you know, don't. Whatever's personal between you and God, keep it personal. Keep it, if you want to say sentimental or intimate, that's a better way of saying it. But some things are meant to be between you and He. <laughs> and, uh, man, there ain't nothing like it in the world. You got and are with God. It just makes all this temporary time worth it, you know? Makes it kind of like ooh, can't wait to see what's going to happen next and how long will this last? It's like ooh, it's gonna last forever. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> and meanwhile, down here you just go, oh man, you know, yeah, sure you're discouraged, but it ain't gonna last forever. <laughs> no, it's not. It's going bye bye. It won't take long. So if you want to get out of being discouraged, go do something. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Just go do something. That'll get you out of discouragement. You know, go tell somebody what God has done, you know, in the past. Or listen to what they have to say about what God has done. If that doesn't revive your spirit and give you hope, you know, and whatever, then, you know, I, re I used to remember I used to sing that song that said something about me. Why art thou cast down and quieted within my soul? Why art thou cast down and quieted within me, O my soul? Fear not, for I shall yet praise him. So, in the psalmist, you know, David or whoever was, was saying it at a time or singing it, he was saying that, you know, your soul will at times be disquieted and uncomfortable and discouraged or down. But don't worry. You shall yet praise him. And you don't need a song or earbuds to do that necessarily. Sometimes, you know, there's something more than worship. Because some people worship, worship. Sometimes just God himself will say, Hey, i got a surprise for you today. And you'll just kind of look out on one of those clouds, you know, and you just kind of not imagine things. Because this isn't visualizing, you know, like some Tiger Woods thing or something. Or some other, you know, like sports star that you have that visualizes things. No, this is experiencing. This is called God revealing things to you that you get to enjoy for your personal relationship. And so, at some point in time, maybe you want to do that with Him and you. You know, Him, you know, God, Jesus, spending time with Him. And just kind of look out and say, Hey, Lord, what's it like up there? And just get kind of intimate. And you know what? Who get intimate with you?